Hello and welcome to this Level 3 Mathematics in Context training video for Pearson Edexcel. In this video, we're going to be looking at sampling, including its limitations. Here's the specification reference, and you can see that we need to infer properties of populations or distributions from a sample while knowing the limitations of sampling. There are no relevant formulae available in the formula booklet for this particular reference. Here's an example from the mapping document that maps the content of the core maths mathematics in context references to the GCSE and GCE. So some ideas for teaching. You could investigate mobile app usage so students could construct a survey that looks into how long people spend on particular apps. And you can find this information in the battery section of settings on most mobile phones. Perhaps a method for doing this could be cluster sampling of tutor groups or some other similar setup in your particular setting. You could also think about sports and physical activity and how much time do students spend engaging in physical activities. And maybe a method for this could be quota sampling, making sure you get a particular number of students from each year group. If you do collect all of this data, then perhaps using another aspect of the course, you could use correlation to see if there's a connection between these bits of data. So some key skills for this uh, reference is that students need to understand the difference between what we mean by a statistical population and a sample. And they might be familiar with population in terms of a country, but here we're talking about all of the possible items that could be included in your survey. And they should also know that samples are often used to try and draw conclusions or infer something about the population. Knowledge of different sampling techniques is important, and especially the idea of random sampling. Some of the limitations that they should be aware of include sampling bias, where a sample may not accurately represent the population, and also how sample size and that larger sample sizes tend to lead to more reliable estimates. So let's take a look at an exam question. In this one, it's talking about a new telephone company that wants to set up a telephone and internet package in the UK. It wants to know what services would be popular. And the company decides to take a sample of 400 people, asking 300 from London and 100 from Manchester. The students are asked to give two reasons why this sample is not representative of the UK population. So there's a couple of options we could go for here, but noticing that London and Manchester are both cities, we could point out that this particular method of sampling doesn't include any rural settings. Another possible option to point out is that the UK population is somewhere around about 70 million. So a sample of 400 is very small. So this sample size is not a very large sample. Take a look at the mark scheme. So two marks for valid reasons. And you can see that there's a couple of ones called out here, but the one I mentioned about 400 being a small proportion, so the sample size is very small. You could mention the fact that they're cities. Uh, also, it did say that it's trying to survey the UK and the two places picked were only in the England. So the examiner report for this points out that it was generally quite well answered. And when students didn't, it was usually either a case of they'd essentially said the same Thing twice like you're only asking from London and Manchester and they've only asked in two places which is the same reason and other times they were maybe mentioning that you know references to gender or ethnicity or other aspects that are irrelevant in terms of the context of this scope of the question. So taking a look at another exam question this one does reference a data source but the relevant table is covered here and it's a table with the top five countries for overweight or obese men aged 20 plus. And you can see five countries with their percentage. The question asks, is it true that more men are overweight or obese in Iceland than in the UK? Justify your answer. So, Looking at the table, you can see that Iceland has 73.6% and the UK has 66.6%. So an answer could be, well, we've only been given the percentages here. 
if we don't know the actual population sizes for the two countries, then it's impossible to tell whether Iceland has more men if we're only given the percentages. The mark theme for this one allows two options. So credit's given for stating that we can't know from this information. Percentages don't give you that. Or if a student does have more information, they know that the population of Iceland is smaller than the UK and therefore concludes that a larger percentage of a smaller amount in the first place leads to not being more men obese in Iceland. would also gain credit. So examiner report for this one. Many successful students did use their knowledge of the fact that Iceland has a smaller population than the UK. And it's flagged up here that students do need to develop a deeper level of understanding that percentages represent proportions. And so it doesn't automatically follow that comparison between these two things will necessarily yield meaningful results unless you know uh, more about the actual population size. Into some top tips then. So for sampling, when students are making inferences about a population from a sample, they need to recognize the potential limitations just due to the nature of the fact that they are sampling. If you don't have a census, you don't have the complete picture. And even if you've done everything you can to avoid bias, sometimes just by its very nature, a sampling may still not represent the population exactly. When or if comparing percentages, it is vital that students are aware that a comparison is only valid if the population or sample sizes being compared are similar. So that's that point that was just made in the examiner's report. And knowing about recognized methods of sampling is to be encouraged, along with an appreciation of the advantages of random sampling methods. Thanks for listening to this video. I hope you found it useful.